Okay, it's Henry again, and this is going to be an uncapsuling, unboxing video type thing, and a build video. And these are the uh, Gashapla, which is kind of a cross between uh, Gashapon and Plamo. And these are the uh, Zaku kits. These recently came out in Japan and vending machines and retail for, I think, 500 yen. And it's just basically a tiny Zaku kit inside a plastic capsule. So you've got uh, four different varieties. I've actually got two of uh, one of them. Uh, my friend sent me, uh, one of my friends that lives in Japan sent me one of the uh, Zaku kits. And I said, oh, that's really cool. I want to get some more of these. So I found the uh, a whole set of four on eBay. So now I've got two of the Black Tri-Star Zaku. And you get the Black Tri-Star Zaku, you get the original Green Zaku, Shar Zaku, and none of these come with weapons, but there is a fourth capsule that contains, I think, like five different weapons and a display stand. So those are all the different options you can get with this uh, Volume 1. As you can see, it does say Mobile Suit zero one so they're probably planning to do more of these in the future kind of like the exceed model uh, zaku and gundam and dom heads have been very very popular i imagine these are going to be pretty popular as well so you just open up the capsule get a little bit of paperwork here let's see this is actually I must have the same instructions for every one of them because this is, even though this is the weapon set, it's still got the instructions for the actual Zaku on there. And then it's got, it's got a small section here on how to assemble the uh, weapons. There we go. So you get like the, uh, the large, and all these are based on the origin version. So you get the large Ortega Heat Hawk display stand. Uh, the long sniper rifle looking thing, uh, bazooka, missile pods, and Zaku machine gun, and a tiny little heat hawk. And then the three different Zakus you can get. And then this is just kind of some kind of copyright safety information thing. Anyway. Alright, so there's the display base. Just really simple, two parts, kind of like the uh, simple display bases that came with the Gundam 00 high grades. And then all the parts are on runners. They're kind of individually bagged up like this. And I'll just sort of go across here. Take a look at these individually. Oh, these are kind of hooked together. What's stuck on there? Okay, there we go. Alright, so this is the large top part of the Ortega Heat Hawk, and then the normal sized Heat Hawk, the Zaku machine gun, and the uh, ammo drum for it. Here it is. Oh, these are actually made to be kind of stuck together. I guess just for conserving space. Anyway, handle for the large heat hawk. That's some bazooka parts. Alright, and we've got long rifle parts here. And then the last little baggie is going to have some more bazooka parts, missile pods. And it looks like the last of the bazooka parts. As you can see, the little thing here says Gashapla Mobile Suit Bandai Vietnam. A lot of their uh, Gashapon stuff I found is made in Vietnam. So let's open up one of these Zakus. Probably not going to build all four of them. I'll probably just build one of them. But I will open all of them up. 
So each each one of the Zakus is a little bit unique because the Shar Zaku is going to have the command antenna, and then the high mobility Zakus are going to have the uh, the different backpack and legs. So torso. It, these are a little bit pre-painted. I think the mono eye is probably the only thing on here that's pre-painted that I can see. But it's got a lot of panel lines and a lot of little details on it. Articulation is obviously not going to be fantastic because of how small these are. I'd say these are maybe 220th scale, possibly. Anyway, no detail on the bottom of the feet. The feet are actually hollow. But there's the shoulder armor in the head. There's the shield, and as you can see, it's got the little slots in it, just like the Origin High Grade, where you can put the uh, missile pods. Back of the torso, and these just look like uh, parts where like arms and legs and stuff are going to connect. You got the legs here. And the backpack, as you can see, obviously no knee articulation. Front of the legs and the back skirts. Come on, camera. Oh, my lord, there we go. And then this looks like it's going to be the arms. Anyway, so a lot of ball joints on this, a lot of uh, pegs and ball joints, as far as I can tell, in terms of articulation. Open up the Sharzaku. And very, very bright red. Much, much brighter than the uh, red from the Origin High Grade Sharzaku. This is almost like a Johnny Ridden red. So basically all the exact same stuff that we just saw in the green Zaku, only this time the head has a command antenna on it. So same parts. I'm wondering if the yeah, the backpack and the legs are the same as the green Zaku. And then the arms, obviously, are going to be the same as well. Scooch that over here. And finally, the black TriStar Zaku. Now, it's not black black. It's kind of a really, really dark navy blue color. I'm using a new camera here, and sometimes the autofocus is really good. There we go. But it just needs a little coaxing. Anyway. Arms. Same as the last two. And then this time around, there's the shield back of the torso. This time around, we're going to have a different backpack. Have that high mobility backpack, and we're gonna have different legs. There's those high mobility legs. As you can see, it's just got a really simple ball joint for the hips, and I'm assuming it'll have a ball joint just like that for the ankles. So, which one should I build? I think I'm going to snap together this green Zaku. So I've got my instructions here. Looks relatively straightforward. This shouldn't take very long at all. I don't think I'm going to bother cleaning up any of the nub marks. Because for the sake of this video, I just want to kind of show off how the kit goes together and how it's articulated rather than properly filing and sanding all the nubs and stuff. 
Let's see. Part number 13 is going to be our ankle joint. It looks like it right there. These numbers on the runners are actually quite small. If you're, uh, I almost feel like I need to get some reading glasses or something just to see these things. So there, and then the other one I'm assuming is on the other arm runner. And then we are going to need the legs. Oops, that just kind of fell apart on me. Yeah, these uh, runners are sort of held together by the actual parts. So just be careful with that if you're snapping one of these things together. Okay. Now I think we can build these legs. This little ball joint is going to go like so. And, yep, there we go. I was trying to check and see if the front of the leg was actually left and right specific, and it is. So that's going to go together like so. This is kind of an odd feeling plastic. Hold up. I wonder if it actually says... Okay, yeah, it says polystyrene. So regular modeling cement should work on these for fixing the seam lines and stuff. It's just kind of a... It feels weird for styrene. I wasn't sure if it might have been ABS or not, but the instructions say polystyrene. Which, if you don't know your plastics is polystyrene is the same stuff that just about every single gun and model kit is made out of. Alright, I'm going to move on to the torso. So we're going to need these parts here. It says these are going to be the shorter joints. And then back of the torso these are going to be where the hips plug into and front of the torso and last but not least the back skirt Okay, so it looks like this is going to fit into the back skirt, oops, upside down, like so. And the legs are just going to pop into those sockets right there. And then these look to be the shoulder joints. Let me get a closer look at this. All right. That's going to go there. This goes here, and then this is going to plug into the front of the torso, and then we just pop on the back skirt. Seems to be a few little gaps on here. It's like there's a gap where the front and back skirts meet so you'll probably have to use a little bit of putty to fix that because I'm squeezing it together and that gap's just not wanting to go away anyway we can pop these legs in here and there's a little bit of movement a little bit of front and back side to side obviously rotation and then the ankles have a little bit of movement as well so not really articulation per se, but just enough to shift the parts around so he's standing up straight. Okay, since I've got this backpack already out, I'll go ahead and 
plug that in. And then the arms. Looks like each arm has its own little ball joint here. And then the actual arm is just two halves that sandwich together. Yeah, if you ever built the uh, cup noodle gunpla that came out back around 2010 or so, these are a little bit bigger than those. Not quite as small as the gun cup noodle gunpla. Which means these do have a bit more detail on them. Alright. Just clip off this excess plastic and we can get these arms put together. Actually, let me get these shoulder arms real quick. Alright. Okay, so the instructions are telling me that Shoulders are going to go together something like this, and then you got your two halves of the arm that just sort of sandwich together like so. Let's go plug into the shoulder joint, put on the shield, and then that will go in like so. And then likewise we'll do the same thing for the other arm. Okay, last but not least, well, maybe not last because I'm going to build one of the weapons. Last for the green parts, anyway, is the head. Just snip this off. Head's just two parts. Got a top and a bottom. Put those together. And it's got a ball joint that just pops on like so and there we go your basic Zaku is now done it's actually got quite a bit of head articulation the ball joint sits a little high so he's got quite a bit of up and down side to side movement with his head and obviously full 360 rotation so arms Shoulders can't really go in and out very much, but they do go, they do have some forward and back wiggle, and then 360. Shield can go like that. We got 360 below the shoulder, and then that's it. There's no articulation in the elbows or the wrists. No articulation in the torso. The hips are just a very, very limited ball joint. You've basically just got rotation and a little bit of side to side and forward and back wiggle. Same thing with the ankles. You got a little bit of rotation and then a little forward and back, a little bit of side to side. So these obviously weren't meant to be articul fully articulated, posable kits. They're just neat little things you get out of a vending machine and can display on your desk. So I'm going to put together one of these weapons. Might as well just do the basic Zaku machine gun, which disappointingly looks the least impressive out of the weapons because there's a lot of areas in here that should be uh, 
hollow when they've got plastic. As you can see here, like this little area, this little area right here is supposed to be open, but it's just solid plastic. I guess you could get a uh, drill or a Dremel tool or a hobby knife and uh, cut that out, but that little bottom part right there is going to be very, very, very thin. So you can do it. You'll just have to be really careful about it. And then the ammo drum goes on the top and it has this big, like, obvious round peg on top of it. I have to putty that over because that's kind of distracting. But anyway, for for the price, 500 yen for one of these old capsules, I guess I really shouldn't complain all that much. They are actually really, really well detailed. They got a lot of panel lines and details and stuff on them, so it's actually a pretty good looking little kit for something that came out of a capsule machine. So really, really cool stuff. So like I said, I'm not going to bother building all four of these Zakus and all these weapons on camera. I just wanted to give you guys a preview of what these things look like straight out of the capsule and uh, what their articulation and detail is like. So that about does it for this video. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.